drive your car, the less gas you have. Does that make sense? So as one thing goes up, another thing goes down. Give me an example of inverse variation. Can you think of one? The more you go shopping, the less money you have. Yeah, that's true too. Well, unless you just don't take your credit cards with you, which sometimes I do that. It's kind of fun to look, right? You gotta no. get new, new shoes or something. Well, no. Actually, I don't buy new shoes. Never mind, it doesn't really matter. I go car shopping. I love shopping for cars. I just drive around, free, uh, free trip around the city if you'd like. Sometimes they let you stop off and give a Slurpee sometimes too. If, if they really want to make the sale, they'll let you do that. Give me a different example of inverse variation. One thing goes up, another thing goes down. Maybe your electricity, um, the more you have to pay. I mean, the. Yeah, it'd be direct, right? The, yeah. the longer you leave it on, the, the more you have to pay. Okay, so we have another direct. Anybody else? Exercise you do, the less weight you have. Very good. Okay, so the more you exercise, the less weight you have, unless you're, you're just pumping iron, right? <laughs> Daniel, he, he's getting he's seriously buff in there. But, uh, but yeah, the, the more you exercise, typically the less, maybe the less fat you have, the less you're, you're going you're gonna to have that on your body. So very good examples of inverse variation. Here's the idea. With inverse variation, or in other words, we'll use some variables here. If y varies inversely as x, so the key word for us in this context is inversely. If y varies inversely as x, then y goes down as x goes up. And this is the opposite of direct. x went up and y went up. In this case, x goes down and y goes up. Or x goes up and y goes down. It's that relationship. The way we can get from direct to inverse, if direct was k times something, k times, as, as this thing goes up, we're multiplying it by some multiplier, it's making a larger quantity. It's making this quantity larger. In order to raise a number and have something else go down, that's going to represent a fraction. Because as you make a denominator larger, the value of that number drops. Does that make sense to you? So if I took the number 5, if I divided it by 7, that's probably a bad example. Let's say. Uh, 35. If I divide that by 7, we're going to get 5, right? Mm -hmm. If I divide that by 10, we're going to get 3.5. Does that make sense? If I divide it by 35, I'm going to get 1. If I keep going, if I divide it by 70, I get 1 half. So as this number grows, this quantity becomes smaller. Do you see that, the idea there? So this idea of this division, this is what inversely proportional is all about. It says if y is going down as x is going up, Really what we have is y varies inversely, or y equals k, not times, times would be the direct. Times means as we're multiplying, it's going to go higher. k over, and this is what I talked about yesterday, uh, making sure we knew that direct was k times, because now for inverse we're going to have k over. So when you see the word direct, we mean k times. When we say the word inverse, we mean k over. And this is the reason why. As x is getting larger, this k, that's a constant again, constant variation, that's not changing this quantity altogether would get smaller, just like this example I showed you. So again, k is a constant. That's not changing. Let's see if we can wrap this around an example, then do a word problem similar to this one, and we'll be done with our section here today. Okay, so let's suppose y varies inversely as x. Suppose y varies inversely as x. Right now, we know that that's telling us which equation to use. It's either going to be k times or k over, depending on whether we're direct or we're inverse. In our case, are we direct or inverse? inverse. So are we k times, ladies and gentlemen, or k over? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, now we going to fill out the rest of this. Y is 6 when x is 3.
Well, that's going to be important in just a bit. What we're going to try to do is find k and again set up the equation. So find k and write the um, inverse variation equation. So read through a problem one more time. Suppose y varies inversely as x. We're not dealing with direct right now. We're not k times. We're going to be k over. We just talked about that. So when we set up our problem, which letter is going to come first in our case, y or x? <coughs> Yeah, that's right. Because when we're looking at this direct inverse variation, whatever whatever's varying directly or varying inversely as the other thing, that comes first. So if y is varying inversely as x, the y comes first in our equation. It says y equals, and then we have to realize that inversely means, well, that's k over. So we're going to write y equals k over x. This really says the same thing as y varies inversely as x. That's all it means. What do we do now? Yeah, same thing we just did, right? Same exact thing. So when we plug these in or substitute them in, how much is y for us? What's that say? So 6 doesn't change. Uh, how about the k? Do we change the k right now? No, that's what we're really looking for. So k stays there and over... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. How do we solve for that? Good, yeah. This is k divided by 3, right? How do you get rid of divided by 3? What's the inverse operation? <laughs> Let's multiply. As long as you're doing it on both sides, you can do almost anything to an equation. So we're going to choose to multiply by 3. Or if you really want to think about it like this, you're multiplying by 3 over 1, right? Multiplying fractions like that. That means you can simplify them as you go. And on the left-hand side, we'll multiply by 3. So what's k equal to then? Okay. Sure. Yeah, we'll do the 3 times the 6, we'll get these 3's are gone, leaving us with the k. That's what we wanted to have happen there. 18 equals k. k equals 18. Are we going to stop there? No. We're almost done. One, one little step. What do we do now? Okay, good. So writing the equation simply means that you're going to look back at the first equation you've, you've written and just substitute that k, the value of k, in for k. So in our problem here, we should have y equals, instead of k, we're going to have 18. We're still going to have x. Let's go one step further. If I asked you... To find y when x is 2, could you do it? No, sure, the problems in your homework are going to ask you for that. Say, OK, great, you made this up. Now find y when x is 2. How much would y be when x is 2? Yeah, good, be 9. Be 18 divided by 2, you can get 9 out of that. Or find y when x is like 7. Well, then you're going to get a decimal, or you're going to leave it as a fraction. No problem. As long as we're understanding that we make this up first, and then we use this in, in, with any information I give you to solve the problem. That's really the idea. And this is going to translate to the next problem we do, which is a word problem. Okay. Let's say you're driving down the road, right? Do you guys ever drive? Yeah. You know what driving? Okay, good. So we all have this in common. We're all drivers. Which is scary sharing the road with some of you. You've got to be honest. I, I, I don't ever see any of you. But I had, I had a student one time. I swear, every day I would go to school, I would, I'd be driving along, I'd drive my 72 miles an hour because I don't want to get tickets, put on cruise control, you know, have a nice, nice day. Every single day, she'd go, wham, and she would pass me like a blur. I mean, she was in this big SUV, it was like an escalator or something, and I could feel like the rumble coming, and she would just pass me. <laughs> and uh, she'd get to school, obviously, just like, two, I think she had a class before the class I, I taught. Uh, taught her. So she'd get here a little bit before me to go to her class and I'd spend my hour going here and going to class and I'd see her and I'd always give her a hard time about it. But the point is that we went the same distance, right? Yeah. We went the same distance. Who did it take longer to get here? We came from the same spot, by the way. She lived right down the street from me. 
So we live like maybe a quarter of a mile away, and we came to the same exact spot. Who did it take longer to get here, me or her? Yeah. Of course, why? I was going slower, yeah, I was, well, I was going above the speed. Okay, you need to know that the speed limit's not actually 72, man. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, it took me, of course it took me longer, the limit is how fast my car can go, obviously. <laughs> so it took me longer to get here because I was going slower, or it took her shorter to get here because she was going faster, does that make sense? In other words, the time it takes you to get somewhere is inversely proportional to the speed in which you're going. Right? So the faster you're going, the shorter it's going to take to get there, or the slower you're going, the longer it's going to take to get there. Those are this inverse variation problem right there. So we're going to say this. The speed needed to travel a certain distance is inversely proportional to the time the distance can be driven. Or inversely, let's leave that time. So the speed needed to travel a certain distance. So the distance is not something that's changing here. We're, we're going the same distance. Me and the, the student of mine, we're going the same exact distance. speed needed to travel a certain distance is inversely proportional to the time. Let's go that wrong. Hey, is that inversely proportional throwing you off, or is that okay with you? Just like directly proportional and very directly the same thing, very inversely, inversely proportional, same thing. Speed needed to travel a certain distance is inversely proportional to the time. Let's say this. The distance can be driven in five hours at a rate of 24 miles an hour. That's really slow. Let's make it faster than that. Let's make it like 70. <laughs> Five hours at 70 miles an hour. That's me. Let's see.